Warning, spoilers ahead. The following is a story dive into issues four through seven of Boom Studios' Magic the Gathering comic book series. We left off on the plain of Ravnica, where a mysterious comet in the sky brought with it sinister attacks throughout the cityscape. With Jace Bellerin under psychic attack, three guild masters traveled deep in the Undercity to confront the Demir Guild, only to find it no more. With Dusk Mantle lying in ruin, who or what is truly behind these attacks, and what is their end game? Our story continues. As the ruins of Dusk Mantle crumbled before them, the realization that House Demir itself had been a target of the terrorist plot dawned on Kaya, Ral, and Vraska. The sheer level of destruction dwarfed the damage done to their own guild halls and left them certain of one thing. The primary target of the terrorists was House Demir itself. This hypothesis, however, was not shared by Niv Mizzet. Shortly after returning to the surface, the three guild masters presented their discovery to the Living Guild Pact. Niv Mizzet, ancient beyond human comprehension as he was, doubted Kaya, Ral, and Vraska's conclusion. He remembered the evils perpetrated by House Demir over the many centuries of Ravnica's history, and speculated that the destruction of Duskmantle was little more than a ploy to cover the Demir's tracks. As evidence, he pointed to a string of assassinations carried out as the three guild masters were searching for Dusk Mantle, declaring that he would soon call a conclave of the guilds, the Firemind dismissed them. Unconvinced by Niv Mizzet's logic, Kaya, Ral, and Veraska agreed to continue their partnership until they got the answers they desired. But at that moment, they were exhausted, and they agreed to discuss the issue further after some rest. Their sleep, however, did not prove restful. As they dreamt, they were each of them visited by Lazav, guild master of House Demir. Lazav revealed that, though they were not behind the initial attacks, the Demir had been behind the attack at the hospital. Their target, however, had not been Jace or the three guild masters. The purpose of House Demir, Lazav said, was to discover secrets that could undermine all of Ravnica and deal with them. One such secret lay hidden within the depths of the Hospitaliers of the Frozen Heart. The conspiracy there proved so impenetrable that even the Demir were unable to uncover its goals. All Lazav knew was a name, one he dared only whisper in a dream. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Kaya, Ral, and Vraska gathered their forces and marched on the hospital. The abbot greeted them warmly, but the guildmasters were in no mood to parley. Vraska immediately demanded Jace be released into her care, but the abbot claimed Jace had made a full recovery and left earlier that day. Vraska, certain the abbot was lying, attempted to turn him to stone, but for the first time in her life, her magic proved unsuccessful. The abbot smiled, telling the Gorgon that he was protected by his goddess. As the tension rose, a mob of the guildless formed around the guild masters. The common folk of Ravnica were loyal to the Hospitaliers, one of their few allies on a plain where the guilds governed almost everything. Hidden among the crowd lurked Tezzeret. Just as the tension seemed about to boil over, Aurelia, angelic guildmaster of the Boros Legion, intervened. Unconvinced by the tale her fellow guildmasters told, Aurelia ordered them to return to their guild halls. As the crowd dispersed and the guildmasters retreated, Ral sent a parting volley at the abbot. I know the name of your god, Ral said. Smiling, the abbot retorted that soon everyone would. On Dominaria, the center of the multiverse, the three planeswalkers met with the ancient chronomancer Teferi. Figuring that if anyone knew the name Lazav had told them, it would be him. The Teferi had indeed heard of the name they whispered. He admitted that he had little personal knowledge of the entity. Instead, he directed them to another planeswalker, one even more ancient than himself. 
though her whereabouts were unknown to the old time mage. He had a few promising leads for his young friends to follow. Ral searched upon Innistrad, plain of the undead, of monsters and werewolves, and occasionally angels. All he found there was deceit. Vraska searched Ixalan, a plain of jungles, empires, and dinosaurs, where once she was a fearsome pirate captain there. And in her search for the ancient planeswalker, she returned to her former crew in hopes that they may have heard of them. But though her old mates could offer her adventure once more, they knew not of the one she sought. On the distant desert wasteland of Amonkhet, an entire plain now populated only by the dead, Caius searched the wastes for the ancient planeswalker, but to no avail, and only narrowly escaping death there herself. Despite the horrors she had witnessed on her home plain, Kaya couldn't help but comment that Amonkhet was the worst place she had ever seen. Their leads all but exhausted, Kaya, Ral, and Vraska reconvened on the plain of Kaldheim, a world of countless heroic tales and opportunities to make even more. It was there, finally, that they found the ancient planeswalker whom they sought, Jaya Ballard. Legendarily unflappable, Jaya greeted the three young planeswalkers jovially, but the smile on the wizened pyromancer's face soon turned when Kaya, Ral, and Vraska revealed the name of the god they feared, Merit Ladge. During the Dominarian Ice Age, when Jaya was still a young task mage, she had her first encounter with the cult of Merit Ladge. The cultists sought her fiery heart as a means to free their goddess from the ice which bound her. Her talent as a pyromancer was already prodigious, so she managed to escape, but she would meet the cultists again. Years later, while recovering from wounds on a Kajeldoran outpost, Jaya would encounter the cult again. As a band of Balduvian barbarians lay siege to the fortress, she recognized their leader as Balish Zev, the cultist who had tried to kill her years before. As the attack commenced, the barbarians transformed into tentacled monstrosities. Though she escaped the attack, Jaya's experiences with the cult were far from over. At the end of the Great Ice Age, Jaya, by then a planeswalker, finally tracked down and put an end to Balish Zev. Realizing that killing their leader would only stop the cult for a time, Jaya tracked down Merit Ladge herself. Merit Ladge was a being from beyond the blind eternities, and her power was nigh unfathomable. Even as Jaya sought to undo her, Merit Ladge's influence began to infect the pyromancer's mind. In those days, however, planeswalkers were far more than just mere mages. They were not unlike gods, and Jaya harnessed that power both to resist this dark god's influence and attempted to kill her. Even with all of her power, Jaya was unable to kill Merit Ladge, and when the dark god turned her attention on the planeswalker, Jaya nearly succumbed. Even so, Jaya was strong. She used her considerable power to cast Merit Ladge, still sealed within her icy prison, into the blind eternities from whence she came. All of this, Jaya recounted to Niv Mizzet and the guildmasters of Ravnica, warning them that they needed to act quickly if they wished to save their city. Meanwhile, in the Hospital of the Frozen Heart, word came to the abbot that the guilds meant to attack. Expecting this day was bound to come, the abbot was ready for such an event and ordered his underlings to prepare the sacrifices. In the chamber of the guild pack, the guildmasters plotted an assault, but disputes over jurisdiction slowed them down. Kaya, Ral, and Vraska knew that if they did not act quickly, they had no hope. So instead of waiting to see whether the Azurius or Boros would lead the attack, the three planeswalkers used their powers to planeswalk away from Ravnica, and then immediately back, right into the hospital of the Frozen Heart. Even as the planeswalkers discovered the grisly remains of the Hospitaliers' sacrifices, cultists who had infiltrated the guilds began to wreak havoc all over the plain. Many of these cultists transformed into monstrous, tentacled horrors. Within minutes, the guilds were forced to abandon their plan of attack in order to protect their homes. On the roof of the hospital, the abbot prepared the final sacrifice necessary to summon Merit Ladge. 
Jace Spilaren. The telepath's mind was used by the cult like a beacon to summon their god. With that purpose achieved, the abbot prepared to butcher Jace like all the rest. It was at that exact moment that Kaya, Vraska, and Ral arrived. While Vraska attempted to distract the abbot from killing the man she loved, Kaya used her ghostly powers to sneak in close to Jace and rescue him. Ral and Vraska demanded a surrender from the abbot, but he defied them. He had already won, or so he proclaimed. The comet had all but arrived. Suddenly, from the air descended Niv Mizzet, who took the abbot in his jaws, ending the cult leader's life. At that moment, Kaya and Jace reappeared on the rooftop, and for the first time in weeks, Jace was conscious. As Vraska embraced the telepath, Kaya asked if the abbot had any last words. Ral mockingly told her that the abbot simply yelled about the comet. Why was every crazy person on Ravnica obsessed with it, he mused aloud, when it was only a giant piece of ice. But suddenly it dawned on them all, a giant piece of ice. It was no ordinary comet that blazed across the skies of Ravnica. Marit Lage had come. The story continues at your local comic book store. Be sure to keep an eye out for the latest from Boom Studios in Magic the Gathering and more. What will befall the plane of Ravnica now that Marit Lage has returned? Turn the page and find out. <laughs>